Over the weekend, an Associated Press reporter was on a flight, a Southwest flight from Houston to, I think, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And as they were landing, the pilot said over the intercom, let's go, Brandon. Actually, what the pilot appears to have said is, let's go, Braves. The audio that was captured uh, was truncated, and it sounds very much like the pilot was saying, let's go, Braves. Now, the audio is recorded. Southwest has launched an investigation. Even the New York Times is doing a story on this pilot. They are out to get him. They want to destroy the pilot. There is an investigation Reporters across America with blue check marks on social media, the hordes of Mordor or are after a Southwest pilot for allegedly saying, let's go, Brandon. The reporter herself tried to storm the cockpit to demand an explanation. I'm not making that up. She even tweeted about it, put it on TikTok. She wanted into the cockpit. She insisted the flight attendants open the door. They nearly threw her off the plane as a result. She just, she says she was writing a story on the let's go, Brandon phenomenon. I, I gotta I, I actually have to spend some time on this. This is important. I'm old enough to remember Bush character caricatured as a monkey. George W. Bush as Hitler. Dick Cheney the murderer, the blood on their hands, the caricatures, the F Bush chants. The women dressed, uh, code pink protesters dressed in costumes designed to look like a, a women woman's female reproductive organs. They actually dressed in full body costumes that, that looked like that. At Trump's inaugural, they wore knitted pink hats using the P word to describe them. That, that's what they wore in protest. The F, F Trump. That, that, that's what they would chant. They rioted. They they protested. They burned limousines. They smashed through small businesses. They've done all sorts of violence along the way. And now they're upset with Let's Go Brandon. Now they're upset with Let's Go Brandon. Oh, and, and my buddy Mark points out, remember Rashida Tlaib after, after her election? says now we're going to impeach the MFR and the crowd went wild you you don't get to cheapen and vulgarize political discourse and then get upset when people say let's go brandon which is a way for people to be in on a joke without further vulgarizing the conversation because let's go brandon is a substitute for f joe biden which you people were fine chanting for trump and for bush but you don't want it for joe biden why because he is yours and this is religious fanaticism and the zealots that you don't like the heresies. The left is reacting to people like let's go Brandon, almost like the, the Charlie Hebdo massacre people were because of the Muhammad cartoons. They're, they're not trying to kill people. They're not trying to chop off heads, but they are trying to destroy lives. There isn't a lot of difference between Woko Haram and Islamic jihadists other than the jihadists will chop off your head and the wokes just want to destroy your life. But it's from the same worldly religious zeal. The things of the world hate the things of God. And the things of the world, they don't like to be mocked. The devil doesn't like to be mocked. And it's all part of a spiritual collapse in the country. The vulgarization of politics in this country comes from a deeply dark place of a spiritual void where people are now letting letting politics creep into their lives and fill the void left by where God should be. And so they become angry and they take to religious fervor and and they're upset by it. And and here's the interesting thing about it. Since the year 2001, the media has largely been aloof to, tone deaf to, ignored the left-wing vulgarizing of culture, particularly political discourse. There were never stories about the the F. Bush or F. Trump phenomenon, which has been a thing. There were never major stories about how so many people on the left compared George W. Bush to Hitler. Now, the media openly uses the big lie referring to Republicans. The 
They don't care when it's their side doing it. They care passionately when it's our side because they don't want to be mocked. They can't be mocked. They can't take the, they they can't take it. The left has lost its sense of humor. Not that they ever had one, but it's gotten even worse. This is a problem that they've got to deal with. Now, here again, they're trying to destroy a Southwest Airlines pilot because a reporter for the Associated Press overheard him say, let's go, Brandon. And it actually appears very likely he said, let's go, Braves, based on the audio we have. But it didn't stop the reporter from presuming he had done it. And it didn't stop other reporters from going after it. I, I, I saw a couple of blue check marks. You know, there are some great Twitter accounts to follow. One of them is, is a guy named Drew Holden, a friend of mine. And he pointed out a number of the people who were incensed about the Southwest Airlines pilot saying potentially, let's go, Brandon, are people who were cheering on protesters saying F Trump over the last several years. Of course they were. Of course. Because it's all about team sport. But there is this larger issue here. Now, listen, this is one of those let the listener understand moments because some of you aren't going to get what I'm saying. Some of you, it will pass over your head. And for some of you, I'm about to deeply offend you and I don't mean to. All I can ask is that you show me a level of grace with what I'm about to say. The world is three-dimensional. But it's really, there's a fourth dimension. Scripture talks about it, the things unseen. Our fight is not with the princes and principalities of this world, but with the things unseen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. There is a level of depravity that has creeped into American culture as our culture moves post-Christianity. It's happening on the right as well. We see it on the right too. People on the right are losing their sense of humor. They can't laugh. You know, we are made in the image of God, the Imago Dei. And God has a sense of humor. If you do not believe that God has a sense of humor, behold the platypus. God has a sense of humor. And as people move further and further away from him, the less and less they have a sense of humor, the less and less they can laugh. Jesus wept. He also laughed. And as people make politics their religion, their religion loses grace because secularism has no grace in it. And so both sides then become very, very embittered and angry when you poke fun at them. When you refer to Donald Trump as orange man bad, as I have, because that's kind of one of the pejoratives of the left is orange man bad. But when I say it, you should see the hate mail I get from Trump supporters. And I'm not even talking about it myself. It's what the left says, but they they can't handle it. The left certainly can't handle let's go Brandon. Let's go Brandon of all things. For those of you who don't know the background here, and I continue to find people who don't, an NBC News reporter was talking to Brandon. I forget his last name. He won the NASCAR race. And the crowd is chanting loudly, F Joe Biden. And she claims what she hears is the crowd chanting, let's go Brandon, and asks Brandon about it. And he gets this very perplexed look on his face because that's not what they're chanting. As she says, listen to them, listen to the crowd. They're chanting, let's go Brandon. And let's go Brandon has now been embraced by people across the political spectrum of the right. Instead of saying F Joe Biden, as some college kids were saying, everybody's saying, let's go Brandon. It's a funny joke with a funny origin. Maybe it's overkill, but it's something you should be able to laugh at. And the left can't laugh at it because politics has replaced religion. And it's the same thing as saying F your God to say, let's go Brandon, because Joe Biden is their God at the moment because he's in charge of their political movement. And whoever is in charge of the movement shall not be mocked 
by Republicans and conservatives. You can't mock them because you're mocking their religious high priests and gods. And so the result is in a graceless society, now they've got to destroy, they got to find, seek out, and destroy a Southwest Airlines pilot who probably said, let's go Braves. Poor guy had to watch that World Series game last night, and now they're coming after him for saying something he didn't say. My gosh, that game last night. I threw everybody off my front porch, and the game wasn't over. I knew how it was going to go. The moment they hit a grand slam in the first inning, I was like, this is it. We lost. When the Braves hit a grand slam in the first inning, you know they're going to lose the game in the ninth. And they did. Well before the ninth. That poor pilot. All he did is say, let's go, Brandon, except he didn't. He said, let's go, Braves. And an Associated Press reporter, and that's one of the key points here, is an Associated Press reporter is the one who stirred it all up. They have a vested interest in this stuff. But I want you to be careful here, and this is where I'm going to make some of you mad. It's not just a phenomenon of the left. We're seeing the rise of the post-Christian right, and they do the same thing. You know, it was actually Thomas More who said the devil cannot endure to be mocked. I stirred people up this weekend. I, I became part of this news story unintentionally because of a tweet. I said the devil cannot be endure to be mocked. Neither can the wokes. Make it that what you will, and let's go, Brandon. And uh, the Bulwark crowd came after me, as others did as well. You, you can't say that you're cursing. And I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying Wokeism comes from the spiritual darkness we're dealing with in the country. Uh, religion doesn't go away. It just takes new forms. And, and, and when, when Christianity goes away, darkness creeps in. What we're seeing in this country is a profound spiritual darkness. We are ultimately in a, in a 3 or 4D battle. There's a spiritual fight going on on top of everything else that explains so much of what's happening in the country, the spiritual fight. But you're not supposed to talk about it because you sound a little off. When you talk about it, and it's not just on the left, the devil cannot endure to be mocked. Neither can the people who think Jesus is going to save them from COVID, but they got to take a cavalcade of pills to save them from everything else. Uh Uh-huh, so if you don't like me saying that, it's still true, and it's from the same thing. This level of crazy skepticism and, and irrational questioning and conspiracy theorizing, it comes from the same place as the people who are insane about people saying, let's go, Brandon. You may not like me to say that, but I'm very serious, and it is true. But the topic at hand is not the conspiracy theorists of the right. It's the reporters, the blue check marks, who can't handle you laughing at Joe Biden, who may or may not have pooped his britches in front of the Pope this weekend. That, too, is a new story. All I can say about that one is, let's go, Brandon. 